Freedom 35, 5, 5, 5. Dude, start the podcast. Wow. Welcome, everybody, to Freedom 35. It's Cardano NFT podcast. You sound like you're from London. <clears throat> Cardano NFT podcast, episode 86. Technically, episode 87 for all the OGs out there. My name is Tommy. I go by T O W M Y. My name is TJ. I go by Lazy T. And I am the other Tom. I go by Lavish Bear. <laughs> and tonight, Tommy Pickles. What a rug rat. Oh, there you go. The yeah. <laughs> you took it away from him. <laughs> you rugged no, him. That's from all his right. Joke. No, I was going to say, because I already, I wasn't sure how to like introduce that because it wasn't going to be an organic response now. But that, like, uh, I, I, I had you guys stumped. You're like, it did. Right. I mean, yeah, sure. Your name's Tom. <laughs> like, all right. I had the box <laughs> thinking on that one for real. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that was even better. That's yeah, did that a, first. A little carpet theme, a little rug, rug yeah. theme. We got TJ down Tiny there. Carpet, carpet CNFTs. Carpet like shopping that. this week, dude. Yeah. You know what? I collect rugs. Do you? You actually do. They're That's fluffy true. and they're in uh, space. Come on. Hey. Hey, I got some otters up there with them. Hey. hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, he's the uh, father of dragons. No? Yeah, mother of dragons. Oh, TJ, you know what that is? That's a spicy meatball. There we oh, go. I still love that great quote over there. Fantastic. But uh, welcome everybody, another week, welcome. another episode, uh, another podcast, and another live stream over here. Not only Cardano NFTs this week, Polygon NFTs over on uh-huh. the channel. Shout out to Zushan, aka Shaz, jumping onto the stream this past Monday to go ahead and uh, catch us up on Denketsu. And this shout out to that those. to that coffee mug you had too. Honorary dude. guest of that show. You threw me off so much when you started saying that because I didn't realize I had I to say it, dude. It, I it was saw it huge. Time I picked it up. Yeah, dude, it was like it, it, uh, way too big. Like, I don't know way, if it was just really big. close to the camera, like you know, like when fishermen like they hold their like a fish like really close to the camera so it looks massive. Yeah, I just couldn't tell if it was like a perspective thing or if it was uh, actually a really big mug. Oh, oh yeah, not. it's such a bit. I can't even follow, pull it up over here, but um yeah dude I, he was like drinking it and tj instantly just called him out he's like dude that's a big mug you got going I, on right I had there. to i had to ask you're just a it. coffee mug guy i dude i love coffee mugs my thing you should see my cabin i got a shit ton of them do you i did i do actually i know that for a fact that I was like such a tj too. thing he's like what every time i keep, keep trying to click on this over there he's just rugging me i can't i can't even get it onto the screen right now it's that's gonna be a common theme over here you know what i should have done is pulled a rug uh theme i guess something um like a soundboard for that I don't you should just have a, a carpet a thumbnail this later. week. Yeah. I don't know. I could show you the road. Oh, yeah. I was going to go Aladdin theme. We could do that. I True. Could show you the... We'll just Nips. have you sing it. There it is. There's a big one. He just showed it. You guys yeah. missed it. Great. Ah, we wrote Right on cue. And if you're listening in your car right now, even better content. Yep. <laughs> you guys missed it as well. It's big, though. Trust you guys. Me. Uh, I can't yeah. tell if he has a big mug or a small head. It could be, you know, still another perspective <laughs> thing. Who knows? Who knows? Audibly, you can see this thing right now. There you go. He's holding up because I called him out on it right there. Yeah. There you go, listeners. It's, 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 actually, up again. it's actually drinking out of a coffee pot. Uh, if you guys do pro tip over there for our audio <laughs> listeners, if you click on the timestamps in the video description, it will actually link you over to the YouTube and then you can actually see what the hell we're talking about. Ooh, pro tip. What, what if it's a normal size mug and he's the size of an infant? Wow. You know, everything's bigger down there in Australia, right? Like all the animals, everything. It's just, I thought that was mugs. Texas. It applies. Yeah, eh. that was Texas. No, I thought I all your exes Texas. live in Texas. Like a George Not Strait? Texas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> we're going way off the rails here but yeah we, we had, are uh, we're uh then Ketsu on fantastic we did uh and we caught up with him uh the, one of the big things was obviously the polygon um movement over there new collection 4444 of them with uh those purple silhouette pfps that we've been seeing all over the timeline right now i honestly love the shark hoodie one i don't know why <laughs> that like i love that not a, not all of them show the traits like i kind of like him being this way well, he said that they added some of those to the actual collection because people actually were liking them. And I myself like the silhouettes of them too. Not that I don't like the artwork because I do like the artwork the best of these ones, but the silhouette looks kind of dope too. Brock has a PFP picture. I mean, I'm more seeing it like, all right, you know, before we see a silhouette full NFT collection drop with like 10K, it is very cool to see and like to imagine too, just like the potential for like what actually gets highlighted because it emphasizes those traits so much when right. the underlying character is just black like that. It, like everything else just pops out so much. Uh, it's really cool when it's like in shadow. 
Oh, I think it really, I mean, they really did their research and I mean, they've, these guys have been around the block, right? They're coming up on two years now and they've gone through multiple iterations, different kind of collections. And now jumping over to Polygon to kind of expand their brand. Um, cause they're, they, they position themselves as a gamified multimedia experience. So they're going that route of big branding and they really have, like you said, they've got, they built out all the lore. Uh, they have a ton of things to do. And he goes, we kind of just like need to get our core base there. We have so many different things that people can tap into, but we really need to expand that so people can really dive in to appreciate that a little bit more. It was really interesting to learn about Polygon from that side. Cause I mean, besides a little bit, you kind of filled us in on Tom, you were a little bit uh, in the dark on that side. Um, so not only just learning more about it and how we can end up minting, but also like from the creator side, it was cool to, cool to hear. Yeah. Well, I like how too, they explain how Magic Eden Marketplace does their due diligence for projects even getting on their platform to mint. I think that was a a huge, that's a huge testament for them as far as a, a minting platform and a marketplace goes, because I think, I know we're a decentralized space using crypto, but I feel like you need some centralization to kind of keep people and projects accountable, especially for all the rug pulls and just scamming that's been going on, especially this week in Cardano. Has there been so a the lot fact- of rug pulls? <laughs> we're gonna get into that don't you don't you worry tom pull the rug out in that topic yeah hey but hey. no i'm just saying i like that he even said that you know it's a little tougher to get on there because they want to make sure they do the best of their ability that it doesn't happen yeah, yeah it could so take the, some time right yeah, yeah. and then this is uh mint details for this too are launching on august 21st and they actually just dropped this because we didn't have these details fully out on the stream on monday but they did drop this that they're uh, pricing for it for the dank list, which is the 250 spots, um, those are 50 Matic. The ninja list, which they had 1,350 of these, which are over allocated, which if you guys are on Cardano, I've never heard what that means. Basically, they've got more spots available than NFTs. So that if everybody on that uh, tried to mint, not everybody would get one, but they do that in a way. So essentially that it does mint out. So if you guys are looking to get in on the ninja list, make sure if you, or if you won from our live stream, Make sure you guys mint a little early and you guys should be good to go. Those are 55 Matic. And in the public, the price for them, if there's anything remaining after that, is 60 Matic. Right that's not bad at all. Honestly, your as of right now, Matic is 69 cents. So that's not bad. Nice. Nice. Nice, TJ. You know? Yeah. Uh, um, a little no, Matic and, plug. And then also, if you own one of the Cardano NFTs from them, you, you need three of them from any collection. And there's 1,111 of these to burn in order to get a whitelist essentially for this as well. So in multiple ways to get into the collection, it will be basically they're going to be marrying kind of the couples into both of their website where it comes down to like connecting your wallet, uh, whether it's on the Matic side or on the Cardano side, they'll have wallet connectors for both. So you can uh, participate and take advantage of their missions platform. Um, and I'm curious too, because you got it's how that... Deep. And they did say that they've like onboarded, uh, you know, quite a few people into Cardano from this as well. And that they're going after that, uh, you know, that market over there. So that'll be interesting. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw that just a little back off topic from that, but interesting from them or interesting for them is they kind of, uh, the top spot over there, which has kind of been taken up by not only the alpha when we kind of talked about, but, uh, Utes, right. Utes yeah, they're the going. Big one. Yep. I saw mm-hmm. that news today where they're going. Utes is bridging, uh, crossing the bridge back to Ethereum, and they're actually pulling out of poly, uh, Polygon. So interesting. Yeah. I, I don't understand why. I don't know uh, if it's a money thing, wanted, community thing. Or he what? wanted to unite the communities, but he didn't want to split them up onto two different blockchains. He wanted to keep them all on one. Um, so, and I, I don't know what I'm assuming too, just you know, positioning yourself to be on the top chain for the next run going into it. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, from a monetary standpoint for the holders. I know the holders are pretty much like, thank you uh, for doing that over there on the use side of things. Because honestly, the use <laughs> PFPs look way better, like personally to me than the D gods. Um, but obviously the D gods, they hold uh, the higher floor price over there. So I do think there's a movement for the Utes to really start to chase and kind of close that gap between the floor prices of the two now that they're on the same chain. And they- the uh, Fafa? Mm, maybe some of the I mean, either way, they're really expensive over there. But I just think that's interesting now from especially for Danketsu and these other uh, brands to really establish like a top product over there because they're, big, you know, the big one now is kind of out of the way. Mm-hmm. So but that also goes the other route of like, hey, we just lost one of the biggest, most enticing projects over on Polygon while a lot of people were looking over there and hype. So I, I think have to come. I don't know if we're going to I think we're going to, you know, kind of go off that U topic. I feel like the Utes 
I mean, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. I mean, I don't, it's, not, it's not my project. I don't even own a U. I'm just saying, looking on the outside in, it just seems that they should have just stayed over there. Because if you think about a product, you can buy, let's just say I'm going to use Nike or Adidas, for example. You can buy Adidas product with different currency. So mm-hmm. if the big picture here is to get all the blockchains to kind of coincide in one marketplace, what does it matter later on once there's a marketplace that you could use Polygon, you can use Ethereum on the same site, you can use Cardano. They should have just kept everything all where, where everything was doing already. In my opinion, right. and they got a lot of people talking about it. That's for sure. And they brought they did. a lot of people over. I guess that's the only thing I could say. Yeah, um, and they they did yeah. return a hundred percent of that grant too. I forget how many millions of dollars they were given by Polygon to jump over ship. Yeah, they are okay. returning the full. We're returning say, all the yeah. money too. So yeah, like, that's it's cool. Not even about the money. Yeah, that's yeah. cool then. Because uh, I know that from what you know he shared with us. It sounds like Polygon's got a pretty good onboarding process for like getting new projects on. So yep. I mean, as long as they can, hopefully, they got this hype now. If they can get projects continue to develop or make the move over there i think you know they can yeah i don't think this can you know they can yeah. come out of this I, I didn't put two and two together but i kind of looked that uh zushan's is, reaction uh uh-uh. <laughs> real funny tj <laughs> um but I yeah you no, want to hit that soundboard button i was trying to i was like it's not worth, it's not worth it um but no i was looking kind of back at uh, zushan to see his reaction because we introduced with uh frank kind of onboarding people over to polygon and he was just like ah they kind of like whatever wonder if he kind of knew like hey rumblings behind the scenes or that they're leaving and he's kind of like these motherfuckers interesting could have yeah. i don't know all speculation so you drugged uh polygon damn rugs and they gave rugs, money back rugs. in this case no they didn't, they didn't really, really they didn't really rug they rugged uh the people that we're going over the other projects that we're trying to take capitalize on that hype right there. Right? Well, well, now when they go back to Ethereum, are they letting it burn or like, are they just have people swap it out for free? Essentially, they're not charging anybody to get that to happen. I'd assume Ethereum? that the bridge would be free somehow. However, they're doing it. You didn't look into this more. Oh, man, because you we're don't a have Cardano, a bunch of those. maybe a Polygon, yeah. maybe an Ethereum pot. I don't know what we are. We're just a potty or crypto potty. We're a potty. <laughs> Shit you don't goes have down a ton here. Of D gods in your wallet. I thought you had like fifty. <laughs> He's a kid called Beast. Uh, not anymore though. Hey, hey, <laughs> that's not really. It's not really spicy though. I don't know. But he speaking of Picante, profit. speaking of Picante, Cardano, rugs. We collect Whoa. rugs. Carpacina teas. Tommy Pickles, aka Rugrats. They're uh. That theme this week really just kind of got highlighted. I don't know, man. I feel like every single day this week there was news of a new rug, a quote unquote rug, or something where people were exiting the space or can no longer remain in the space. And holders are the ones that are really getting screwed over right now. And it kind of kicked off. I, I don't know if it was, I think it was the, was it Smooth Getty? You remember Smooth Getty Mountain Club? I only um, remember them because of our first uh, CNFT live stream with all those other streamers. Mm-hmm. youtubers and they remember specifically there was a giveaway and there was hype around them around that time right really i don't remember that giveaway wow yeah I they forget were, that long it. ago too wow. i guess they That's had a good development ago. team from from what what i understood with them although i mean i was never a fan of the art and the names just yeah. kind of just never never like attracted me and the only other thing that i kind of put together was that they were doing like snowmobiles at one point and it kind of reminded me of like the boss cat with like the rocket ships and they felt like they were kind of going through that same kind of Thing, although they didn't have the same hype as them so like i never really looked at it past that so but you kind of forget about projects like this where like oh yeah and then it, i mean it makes sense like i haven't really heard much about them uh throughout the space and we're pretty active so i mean it's inevitable eventually people are going to run out of funding right if the hype's not there and the community kind of dies down and nobody's really talking about it um these guys you know they they put out this big uh, announcement over there basically saying look we're still here We've been basically never haven't taken any days off. We have all these different assets. We were able to mint all this stuff. Although right now um, we can't do this. We're committed to avoiding a rug pull situation, but we also cannot continue to working at a loss for an extended period uh, of fun because funds do not last forever. So they're looking for somebody to basically pick this up right now. So, but are, are they wait, looking for someone to buy them out? Or are they just going to give the keys over for free? Because that, those are two different things, in my opinion. You want someone to buy out a project that has already minted out, made profits on it from the original mint, and then some. You had three sold out mints. You set it there. Now you want to take more money from someone to buy the project. I don't, I don't know if it wants to do that. It says this announcement does not signify the end of our journey, but we are seeking uh, a more capable and funded team to take over. So I don't know what that entails. Right? Are they trying to get them to be bought out? 
or are they just handing it over to somebody else? Yeah, they're like I, I, looking for someone real. They could, you know, just be like, yeah. hey, we're not just giving this to the community. We're looking for a team that can take yeah. it over and actually continue to develop it. Mm-hmm. Well, I, that's more of a blanket out. statement from me is like any project that wants to do something like this, you shouldn't charge another or someone to buy your project that you've sold out multiple mints on and now expect them to kind of refuel that project with ideas and and for free essentially because all they're going to get is secondary sales which is at this point not much probably well at least not at this stage in the game i mean yeah yeah, i mean they can say hey we sold out three mints we have this much sold on the secondary and it's kind of like yeah but that's that was when you had that hype that's old news now like that doesn't you can't just be like oh well now we're just gonna come out of the mint and sell out like no it's not gonna happen My yep. my question is why they keep building all these things that they knew they were just going to go tank eventually. If, you know if that if they knew they were trending in this direction, why why continue to like spend all the money to keep doing all this stuff? Like why, the money management to me seemed you know not not the best at, after reading through all this. You know they got seventeen thousand three hundred thirty three assets that were sold four and a half million ADA in the secondary volume over time. It's like. There's teams with a lot that have done a lot more inside of space that have not raised that much, yeah. um, you know, and and they're still here and they're able to make it through and budget and get through. My thing is, is that I, it just tells me that the IP and stuff of this really wasn't what people wanted um, or what, what, you know, even if they had a good developer and, and they were able to build these things, it was, it all comes down to a lot of, like we said, like Jushan, Jushan said it on the, the show on Monday, but it, like the PFP, if you guys are going that route, really does matter. Like your art really does, does matter um, outside of things that have like the utility for like something, maybe like a tappy tools or things like that, where people take advantage of your stuff and they necessarily, the art wasn't ever anything that people wanted in the first place. They just, there was just something service. they could flip. Yeah. And yeah. This, mm-hmm. in this case, I mean, yeah, it was just like, this was just a hype project that people bought into flip. Like some of these, I think we've said it a lot, like these communities are, held up because they're making money at the time and once the mm-hmm. money stops that's the end of that like why would people hang out anymore it's not yeah. like you know there's not enough other things going on as far as like the entertaining values like to spend your time to take your time to like you know it's a valuable resource to spend that so if you're not making money for your time why am i here mm-hmm. i wouldn't be surprised with the next few months of this year we're going to see more and more projects making similar announcements to that effect because it's just they're not treating it and they never have as a business. I mean, that's another reason why we've never come out with a project because one, we don't really wouldn't have any too much to offer. And we feel like we'd letting down the community, like a lot of these projects are gonna be doing that they are right now and are in the future when they say, No, I can't do it anymore. I'm looking for someone else to buy it out. It's well, when not, did they mint, Tommy? The first one. Um, these were way back, man. I remember last this. year, beginning of last year. Let's look at their actual assets. Um, this one was minted back in February of twenty two. Yep. Anyway, so even now, we were a year just, and a half ago. We were just getting out of the, like the end of that stage, but like there was still just yeah, like you could kind of come out with a project and it was like, well, what are you gonna do? And it's like, oh well, here's our roadmap, but we're gonna make the project and then we're gonna sell t shirts and then we're gonna do a second mint. And then mm-hmm. a DAO. You know what I mean? Like the Beauty second vote. mint was like the next stage of the project and it's like that's that's you know what i mean that's not like as much of a thing as far as if you don't have anything else around it um, yeah. that was like all you needed back then i was like no what do you mean we're giving you an nft and it's going to be worth a fuck ton of money on the secondary that's what the right. project is like there's right. no reason why we're not like there's not necessarily like you know we'll come up with something but is as far as like for real like that's it and well, here, here's second. the other thing too with this right like reading back on this i forgot what their min price was until just reading this right now but 25 ADA is what they came out with which even at that time i don't even know if ADA was a dollar anymore at that i think point. It, i think ADA was still a dollar honestly I'm even check if it, it was like that's still not that much money when you not really look at bucks. it price wise so of course it made sense that they had to keep raising money to keep you know <laughs> selling you stuff over here so it's even that like business plan wise, like what, you know, what is it that you're doing? Like really being able to project or were you just launching something to take advantage of whatever kind of hype? Um, but oh, anyway, we, had like, the, we have a couple of games we're talking about with that. It's like, you know, same kind of thing where it's like, well, yeah, cool idea. But you're asking for 28 a minute. Like is that a realistic that that, that, that ties us into the second top one over here, which uh, I pulled up Char Farmer Nash's thing because the, the actual Twitter for blockchain mages is no longer even active. They rugged that over here, which they had put out an announcement a few days ago saying, hey, guys, we're going to go back. We're not going to be doing a game studio. We're going to go back to our regular jobs. Um, we're going to still work on the project for you. 
uh, yada, yada, yada. This project we covered, I think back around like 4th of July time where they had like, they did like that 28 a mint price. They did these little, it's, it, they dropped like a side scroller kind of video for it. Like, Hey, we got a little game we're working on. We're just a small little group of people. The mint sold out. There's only 3000 of these things, I think. And sit, what is that? 60,000 or six, 6,000, eight or something, 20 times, uh, 3000, whatever that is. Uh, and then all of a sudden they were going to be able, they were like, oh yeah, after they sold out, we, we're going to sell, uh, we're going to quit our jobs and create our own game studio. <laughs> and we're just like, the f- what do you mean? Yeah, what, I, with what money? I, I purposely meant to this just to flip it. I'll be first to say that. I did oh, yeah, not meant this to hold thing, it. Saying, I meant like, it to flip the shit out of it. And I did. Maybe that's no problem from it. But I mean, this, this is where like the fake promise, like the minting at DGen prices, most of the time, are going to get you these end results. Now there's some of those where they, they people have funding before the things even launched. Sure. Maybe, you know, those are rare times where people have to, don't need the money. They're kind of just launching it to build something to get people on the base entry level. But for the most part, that's not the case. And then with them, 3000 of these things at the 28, they weren't, what are they really going to do? But I do remember these, these things actually shot up to almost 158 a floor after launch. You remember that? I did because I didn't get in on the floor price. I got in like the, the initial quick flips, but I was like, damn, I should have a little longer. But now hindsight's 2020. Glad I got out when I did. I did see, I think I was it was someone in Blake's video tonight. They were saying that sixteen thousand dollars can't even bring a semi truck across the country with with whatever that is with goods <laughs> and shit. I was laughing. You expect them to build a full game? Well, or start a studio? Yeah. The studio part is where that's where it gets thrown off. See, originally like I mean, it depends on how big their team is. Obviously, if they're trying to like support three people with sixteen grand, that's not gonna work. But like, if you're like a single developer, which there's plenty of indie games that get worked on by one person over a certain amount of time, especially if they have like a full time job usually, and then it's like, yeah, this is something I'm passionate about. I've always wanted to do, and I do it on the side. I am talented in this field. Here's like things I can do. Uh, where you could take because it's three thousand people, and so you could say, hey, this is gonna be my initial like some money to like take for my work early on. You're gonna have three thousand people to get like early access, as if it was like almost like Kickstarter or something. The people back mm-hmm. the game early, they're all gonna have access. Then when the game's done and comes out to full launch, people still have to buy it that didn't get that early access. You make that money back when you give those people a free game. Um, yeah. It's just like kind of like your early. This is something to work with while I'm working on the game my extra time. Um, but yeah. yeah, that a game studio is now is like all right. That, then it's like wait, sixteen k. Like how many games? Let's make one game first before we say we're going to be making yeah. a bunch of Let's games. see a finished product outside of yeah, a whole exactly. video side scroll. And then this is where Farmer Nash kind of came. I didn't today. even see this. So just yeah, he, he wrote a whole post. He's like, I had a gut feeling blockchain mages would rug and I feel bad for not speaking up. I'm one of the more opinionated founders in Web3 and recently been doing my best to be more cordial with games. Since at the end of the day, we're all here to push the space forward. Um, but he goes basically with anybody with uh, who saw them and any kind of game dev knowledge knows that this was just a copy paste from a Unity tutorial on YouTube. Um, and pretty much just he goes to the to the naked eye, though, he goes, most people and he goes, unfortunately, most of the NFT community aren't gamers. So to see it to the naked eye, it looks like nothing was wrong. The rest of us knew the game was nothing more than a few YouTube videos away from square zero. And he didn't want to reach anything. He didn't want to say anything because he was, at, you know, as a founder inside his face, he felt like, you know, I didn't want to get all this hate towards my project because I'm calling somebody out or messing with somebody else's bag. So he's like, in the future, you know, um, I'm going to do a better job about doing, um, uh- you know, kind of kind of kind of talking about it but it's, it's i kind tough. of i kind of feel what he's saying there though for even for our sake like we don't talk about certain things or projects just because we don't want the hate quote unquote to come our way either from let's say people from the blockchain community that were you know really passionate about it really wanted to, to be successful i can kind of resonate with what he's talking about there right you don't want to get the backlash from your comments or posts well it's one thing if it's like informative then there's other, like sometimes we just like are like hating on it like we just don't like it that's not necessarily like you know, hey, we recognize this to be a scam in some way. We're just kind of like, this is like really trash, garbage, like fuck like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean th- we've talked about that. It's very interesting because we've literally mentioned that before. And that one goes towards my point is where you can see just how like, you know, he's not saying that they, he's saying that the what they showed was a few steps away from just following the tutorial. Like you follow the tutorial along pretty much. And then you just plug in like your own stuff is what it sounds like. Um, yeah. And that's how easy, like, that's where it's accessible for, like, a single developer to make a real game. They can do, like, really cool stuff. But then also, like, we talked about that even, like, to the level of Unreal Engine, where you can get, you know, the actual models made for you, like, in the th- in the correct files and plug mm-hmm. them into, like, the very simple, like, overlays they already have, like, built as far as presets go and uh, and have something that looks like 
very like you know passable to us as not developers and not able to kind of recognize maybe how potentially easy some of these things are when they're like walking around like a 3d environment and the graphics look nice because it's unreal engine and it's just like oh this is like very impressive and it's like now all they do is pay like a hundred couple bucks for like the custom model to be like ported into this preset bullshit as far as like the actual like moving person is just like you know normally like grayscale presets of a guy walking jumping climbing yeah i, I mean I, I kind of agree with him too in the sense that uh, i mean even me like as playing games quite a bit like i'm not dev or anything like that and sure i probably could have just googled and youtube whatever real quick to see that mm, you, know, you know what this really isn't anything at all but I think a lot of us become naive and pro the other part too, is that I had no, there was this thing, this project wasn't on my radar at all, other than it was on the front of JPEG stores website of, Hey, we're minting today. And, you know, just one of those ones where you're scrolling, like, Oh, I see this. And then it gains a little bit of traction because it's a very attractive price and everybody's just trying to flip it anyway. They don't care two shits about this thing's a game at all. Literally no, no care in the world other than make some money on it. And then that's what people kind of hyped it up to be, but I don't think anybody was really excited about, Hey, we're going to have a game here and it's going to be this crazy thing unless you got kind of sold. It was the last time you played a side scroller. Yeah. You're going to sit down and play a game. It was like the last time. Exactly. Like that would have been cool when I was like seven or eight. I'd be excited about it. But now I'm like, I don't want to play that. It's just, I don't know. You can have your NFT in the game. It's like, that's cool. It's cool if that would work, but that's what every project promised so far. And the side scroller is just not on the, I mean, I I like them. So I can, I like you said, they're fun. I think they're can be solid games. They can definitely be like short term entertaining, but how much am I willing to pay for that entertainment? Even at no. the uh, the twenty five ADA. Yeah, it's cheap, man, but it ain't. Would you want to play that game it, on Steam over twenty five bucks? I don't. It's just you got to be cautious too, especially minting in this kind of a market, man. Like, there's if you're in and out, it's one thing, but for the most part, if it seems too good to be true, or it's like, hey, I just bought something uh, for twenty ADA, it's up like over past hundred ADA, like. Maybe do a little, at least take your profits back. At least you know secure yourself so you're not losing any money. Uh, those kind of things uh, will will at least save you in these kind of situations. But if you aped into these things at 100 ADA at that time, got like 20 of them, and then you just held on to it too, that's like it's a harsh lesson for you right now. Yep, I, I would, however, be more inclined to play a side scroller again on my phone. I keep mentioning I mobile say, thing. Mobile. There we go. Because mm-hmm. that's that's where I played them was on was on a Game Boy. So if I could handheld play some of these like side scrollers or games that are potentially have that you know idea coming out, like I would be more inclined to play it on my phone 100%. versus the computer. If I'm sitting on my computer to play a game, no yeah. offense, I'm not playing this game like or a game like this. I'm going to play a game that I really want to play. Right. Um, yeah, for you're hours. taking the time to actually dial into. 100%. Yes. Yeah, the I amount agree. of games we were just talking about before this TJ was like four games. Yeah, exactly. That are like much more. And I bet a year ago, I mean, I'm curious to see. You said you listened to this, team, Tommy. Like, I bet a year ago, I'd have been a little more excited. Like, oh, this is cool. I would check this out, or I would buy it on Steam or something. But that's also because, like, now we see what like Mikasi has coming out yep. as far as like the actual card game and stuff. And just thinking, like, again, if it was like a decision between like I'm going to sit down and play a game, like I'd rather play like a challenging strategy game against you guys as far as the cards go. Then like I would run around this for ten minutes and be like, yeah, all right, cool, I'm done. Yep. Oh, okay. oh cool, it works. Okay, yep. all right. Yeah, that's, that's what we're well. doing. Like, I, I, like now with what we've seen coming out, um, this is just uh, it doesn't even kind of stand up to that that par of hype yeah. or whatever. Eh, but hey, another one bites the dust over here. So just keep an dude, eye on these kind of dude, things. Another dude. speaking of. Uh, <sighs> TJ just got his copyright strikes. Yeah, I was trying to, I I was wasn't trying to cut sure TJ off over there. I was waiting for him just to, uh, we're going to shut that down. Do, 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 we got, do, hit, do, we do. got hit with the, uh, the don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, no, um, Zaitaku Dragons, first off, I cannot spell this the other night on the live stream. And just to do a little follow up on this, is kind of, we found out a little bit more from the community and what was really going on behind the scenes. But this was, uh, Zaitaku Dragons was the one that uh, was rug pulled originally. And I, look, I think it was pretty much like stolen art or like copy paste art from a Solana project or something originally wow. came over here on the Cardano. And then the community picked it up after they rugged the first time uh, a guy named Crypto Gonzo and then another person, or I don't know who the other person was, but essentially what they were doing is they had a Forex trading bot uh, by Crypto Gonzo's friend over here, and they were going to be doing profit sharing uh, to holders. And what happened was, is that they um, had to, I guess, uh, basically they marketed it in a way to the CNFT community and a lot of these projects as, hey, we have this bot, this would be a good thing for your DAO, your treasury or whatever it is. 
as a passive income over here if you guys invest into this stuff we got a working uh, forex bot according to the guy's friend um he was kind of sold on it and was marketing the hell out of this thing um and the guy crypto gonzo seemed like a genuine guy from most people's interactions and what people were talking about but the one thing that was always like kind of like yeah i don't know about how are, we, are you sure we're actually going to get rewards so i guess at one point they did dis distribute rewards which came out of the guy's pocket according to what we're hearing and i don't know the full story of this so take it for what it is but after that there was another uh like i guess you had to basically get a kyc process um to withdraw your funds to basically get the rewards and then like two to three we uh he used personal funds to distribute the rewards the rewards kyc approval withdrawals were prolonged for another two to three weeks um the bot went down eventually and then after being told it went down for maintenance uh he distributed a second round of funds Damn. and then another no update and basically found out the person who was running the bot had a lawsuit against them uh and had the attorney basically said hey this is probably a scam and you guys just got got damn which really sucks for a lot of the people and it sounds like for crypto gonzo because i heard also he was saying that he used like funds from his like kids like money or for college i don't know what he was using like personal money to fund the people because he didn't want them that's to lose not, out yeah i mean that's rough man so that's tough man and i it's that's it's rough to hear something like that unfortunately because it's like hey he this guy who you know had every intention of reviving something and bringing it you know these people who originally lost out some value only to be strung along himself by somebody else taking advantage of him to, you know, eventually get got essentially twice. That sucks, man. I guess it, it does. You know, his heart was in the right place. He wanted to revive the project, you know, give give it a utility for the community after what happened. And then that happened to him personally. That's just that this sucks. For real. And then obviously the price of all this stuff died after all this stuff. And pretty much saying that, you know, there's there's a slim chance to none that will recover these funds or from the attorneys, or maybe you get some of the money back. Like it's basically like, Hey, this bot never it's was it. a yeah, real thing. Was, yeah. yeah. It's done. So for sure. Yeah. So you pretty much got screwed out on this. So I would just say that's one thing of like, Hey, you know, I understand being very okay. into a project and stuff, but you just yelled at us. So I'm sorry. That's how I did that. <laughs> did it must be yeah. uh the regulating or something oh uh, they regulated i'll tell yeah, you that <laughs> not regulated <laughs> um the uh but it doesn't matter um <laughs> just done through time off over here <laughs> no it's more just uh the idea like hey some of these like we've seen it we see some people just get like crazy into projects like where they're just like this is it this is the next this is the next board api club or whatever and it's like this is really not it. And I'm not saying that specifically about that project, but just <clears throat> I've just seen people like way, way into projects that are sometimes like, man, I don't see this being beyond like a hype flip right off the bat. And it's going to be worth nothing. Like this is not a good one. Um, and I think if people had access in some cases, like this person did to extra money to fund projects on the back end, they'd probably make some bad decisions because they're that like into it. Like, no, yeah, this is not going to fail. It's like, this is the next thing right here. We got her. And it's just like, ah, it's not good. Yeah. And it's, it's tough to see stuff like that. And this is also <laughs> makes me kind of skeptical in general, just with the cryptocurrency space when it comes to profit sharing projects, because there's so much uncertainty with the legalities of it, but also just the trusting that people will actually do what they're saying. They, you know, they're actually going to do, you know, even if you feel like, Hey, I, you know, I know this person or they, you know, We've talked about it. We're under contract, blah, blah, blah. Like so many different things, you know, because people are all over the world too when it comes down to this stuff. So it's really hard to kind of track down. Although, uh, you know, it's just starting to get cracked down in certain countries in certain cases. But this is just one of those ones where it's like a heartbreaking story. It sucks because there was one person who basically got got and brought the community into it with them, unfortunately. And it's 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 a hard thing to see because I feel like a lot of these projects and, and it just opens the door at the same time for others to kind of have a similar situation they see how easy it is to do this stuff also too is just like it doesn't take nft serious like when more and more of this stuff keeps happening like people outside of web3 or crypto are like look you just lost all your money to some scam another one yeah, that's a lot of people think that they're just like it's yeah. like it's not just like no i'm not controlling that i'm gonna lose all my money like it's a huge yeah. scam all i hear is about people's wallets getting cleaned out and uh projects stealing money that's all because yeah. it's headlines because it's big news yeah. that happens. Yeah, I, a lot of my patients are older demographic and they will not touch crypto. They're all they're huge into stocks, but they will not touch crypto. They it's too Sweet. volatile for them. It's they think they think it's a scam. Just crypto in general. Oh yeah, Great. no, they're like it's internet money. Like what are you talking about? I get money yeah. from the bank. Like not. Yep. What's your money called? It's you know what I mean. It's 
just like even the names of it is just crazy. The common crazy response is, I don't, I don't mess with that. I don't mess with that. Yeah. Well, makes- oh, you know, yeah, especially just being like, hey, dad, you gotta like, there's this new one, it's called Snack, Snack Token. <laughs> they have an energy have drink, sp- spicy token, and cock token, and bank token. And he's just like, yeah, I go to the real bank. Thank you, though. I get dollar bills. Yeah. <laughs> what were you guys trading today? Oh, you know, we were trading some spice. We were trading some cock. cock. Drink. I'm sorry. What? What the fuck did you guys just say? Hey, um, um, I just finished uh, farming my corn with my cartoon cat, uh, and I made I forty-five. And it poops. I yeah. his belly. <laughs> you playing your Tamagotchi again, Tommy? Um, I have been playing with my Tamagotchi, aka my Makasi. Uh, the Moko Man, as you're, I'm rebranding over here, Tommy, guys. What? You're my Makasi Gachi. Cock. What? I didn't say cock. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, the. Makasagachi. That's hard. Makasagachi. I can't even Mikasagachi. attempt to say that right there. Saying you play with your Tommy Gachi sounds like you call your penis Gachi. Gachi. Tom, is that what you call it? Gachi. Maybe. Or do you play with Tom? <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom does Tommy gotcha. play with his pickles? <laughs> <laughs> there we go oh we're going too far into this Makasi for the time 5, yeah man the card uh, packs are public sales and uh, is going on right now as of uh, Friday of the podcast drop in as the final day for the public sale and then they will be shutting this down and after that it will be going on to again. their website it will be going down to their website and the price will be increasing by 20% essentially over there up to like almost 120 ADA and like uh, 1100 and something would cost is what's left. So price I, will go up a little bit. I keep saying that, but I feel like if they just made it an ADA price, it would, they would sell a lot more, a lot faster. Yeah. I, I know it sounds crazy. Like mentally people don't want to do the extra step if they don't have them a cost. I want to like, know, is that, is that like, so they're saying like, Hey, if you don't buy it now, it's going to be more expensive later. Is that them saying, like, just trying to get people to buy it now? Is that kind of like, because that's a good, you know, don't get me wrong. It's a good tactic. Like, hey, buy it now. Like, if you're interested at all, it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be more expensive in a couple of days. Um, yeah. So is it, that, is it saying that or they, do they just have that much faith, too, in their, like, final game, final product? Where they're like, get it now while it's cheaper because yeah. you're going to want one later and it's going to be more expensive then. So we're just letting you know now. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Like they're trying to induce a little bit of like buying FOMO into it, right? Like, Hey, you can save a little bit of money. Um, this is the, this is the announcement here. So yeah, following the public sale, we're excited to launch a PVP card pack store on the Macossi website. Initial price, 119, eight plus 1199 Macos. It has um, to be somewhat the fate just in the game though, too. Cause otherwise, cause it's kind of saying like, Hey, we can't sell these now at a cheaper price. So we're going to make them more expensive. It's like, what? what? Right. Well, here's yeah. the thing. I would buy more, but the way my bank account set up is, I got checking and the savings. And the savings, yeah. I, I hear you. On that. I, I would buy more. I want more packs. I, I just, think maybe they're going with the fact it. that once people get them and they start to see the collection and it's more in your hands at that point, like people are going to be more inclined to be like, okay, I, I get it. Like I, I want these. Although, like they rewards the people that were there supporting early on, I guess by giving them a little bit more of a discount in this sense. Yeah, I think it's um, that they have faith that people want to get in. Like they're like, we're telling you, like when you start seeing people play. You're gonna want some of these cards, and they're gonna be more expensive then. Interesting part here too is that as of every five every five thousand packs are sold, they're gonna raise the price by another ten percent. If all twenty packs are sold out, the potential increase will be forty percent from the original price. Ooh. So once it goes to the website. Yeah, once it goes to the website. So every five thousand it sells past then, it just the price goes up by ten percent. So um we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know. It's like I said, they must have some confidence in the fact that that they're gonna sell. And the fact that we talked about duplicates being a thing and needed in order to level them from the one, two to so three. smart to do that, honestly. So there's going to be a reason to collect the duplicates over here. And not only that, but the, the there's four, like we were talking about, there's basically four files in one when it comes to these. So you have the video, you have the actual card, with, you have the 3D rendering with the case. And then Four you files have... within one NFT. Correct. There's five NFTs in the pack. Okay, that's good to know, Correct. actually. Yes, yeah. So one NFT contains four different files for it, and you get five Jeez. of them in a pack. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in there, right? So you get the little card version with the actual pack around it. You get your card by itself. You get the card with the stats, and then you get the, the video um, of it as well. So it's cool that they're going through that much stuff just, really to, give, cool. you know, just cards, to give you all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And the shiny, like the their stuff, all looks very well done. It's mm-hmm. very they're marketing very well over here. Like they're definitely showing off the collection. They dropped a really cool video today too, kind of just showcasing uh, some of, some of the stuff over here. 
like actually like their video, like you can tell they're a top notch, like game developer over here. Cause you can kind of see just how well done their animations are and just the videos themselves. I was like, say about their marketing too. Their marketing's top notch. They just constantly just sending out teasers all day. It's, that's great. Hundred percent. I mean, and when you're marketing and actually trying to sell something, right? Like, you know, even if it's not going your way or not, like that's what you need to be doing, right? You need to be showcasing all this. You need to be pushing it every day. Yeah. Like, hey guys, like this is what we're showing right now. We're not holding anything really back from you guys because we want you guys to buy this. Exactly. You know? I agree. So hundred percent. Yeah, good little video there though um, from the team. It's cool to kind of see everything that they're doing. Although. I, I, maybe it's a good thing. Like, as long as they don't necessarily need all the funds right at this exact moment, like they can wait a little bit, even now that they've sold, you know, 25% of this, um, obviously they want a hundred percent, but if they can survive the way they need to for now, and then let it be an organic mint, then that's great. The other part about this, which I thought was, um, you know, a good little post over here from Anthony, one of the, you know, one of the team members basically saying that, you know, just wanted to have a heart to heart. He did, he dropped this over inside of discord as well basically um basically saying thank you to the supporters out there and that they are you know they wanted to share their thoughts saying that they've been in there since the early days they've seen now talking about 99 percent of the projects he's followed in or invested in have been vanished they're gone and active they stumbled into the slow uh, rug abyss um but at one thing that they haven't done is they've never failed to deliver they've given everything there's no empty promises true uh, and they always give you high quality stuff and they said that we worked tirelessly for nearly two years with limited resources. Our core team has vol voluntarily taken reduced pay to ensure the project stays within the budget needed to fulfill the roadmap. And that like sentence right there definitely like stands out when you look at some of these other projects where these people are taking reduced pay over there. They have a budget that they need to stick to in order to get like launch the things that they have inside their roadmap. And I think that's like a key thing for a lot of projects to really kind of look at where Hey, we spent the money already. Sorry, nothing. We're not going to be able to do what we had on the roadmap. Where they're like, we have budget to hit. We're going to hit our roadmap. This is what we need to do in order to do it. And I will. It's the transparency too about everything. Yeah. I think that goes a long way for us as you know holders and community members in the space, just to kind of hear the back end of what the team's kind of going through and what their plans are. You know, just you know, asking to buy you a pack. They said they just want you at least just talk about it, tweet about it, comment, whatever. Just get more eyes on it, type of thing. Yeah, yeah no, it's just like I, I mean, I also can like. You give them that respect and they're like we are tired as shit uh because of all the work we've been doing for this and it's like yeah i mean we can see the work like it's very clear i can see it here obviously um yeah. you guys are presenting it to us regularly where i mean you know just going back to when we used to hear projects even just like ah oh, we're so tired after that mint it was such a crazy <laughs> mint day it, because we used to just send to a wallet they'd have to fucking sit there and send out all these nfts and when stuff. refund and yeah exactly yeah. um <clears throat> Like we went through every single one, one by one ourselves. It took 48 hours. And it's like, that's a terrible process. I, mean, I can't believe that's how it used to be. Uh, but they've been putting in real work and you can mm -hmm. see action. You can see it, you can see the product. Real, real game yeah. devs, real experience. Yep. So the push their project. I love that they were kind of like, hey, even, you know, you don't need to buy all these packs, you know, just even calling, tweeting, showing supports enough. Um, you know, they, they, they plan to bring this not only to the Cardano scene, but, you know, but far beyond that. And I think they've got the the team to infinity do it. and beyond. Yeah, Buzz Lightyear it up. They got the team to to do it though. I think with everything that they have shown, and it'll be interesting to see once these are out how people are receptive to them. And maybe you see a bigger interest too because if they do drop the, I do think suggestion wise to them is if it goes to the website, drop them a cost requirement or come up with an automatic swap option so that way if somebody wants to buy it, give them the hundred and twenty eight of price plus the 28 or whatever it is after that. So if it's 158, just make it one price so they can just go and buy. That would be a suggestion um, or come up with an automatic swap to, to do that if you're really having to push them a cost uh, need for that. I, yeah, I know I understand they're trying to get some out, I guess probably of like the cycle. Um, yeah. And get some of them a cost back. So it makes sense. But yeah, if they just they could just have it so it was one less step. I mean, people, people can be lazy for sure. Lazy T. Huh. I it is it's just mentally it's just like oh I gotta go do that too. Yep. And, well, again, we talked about this I on the live stream. We, we are we're right here. They actually give you the math breakout depending on hey, you know it's easy. You know we need to do one of these. Well, it's like boom, that's what you need. Um, and even go to the point where hey, if you don't have enough of it, you can actually click the link right here and hey, it'll listen, actually take I you get to the it. website. I get they made it as simple as possible. I understand. I, I mean, understand. not as simple as possible. It could just be. 
could just automatically right? done on the background. Yeah, they could still like they could just Why work that. Give it away for free. You know? They could just work <laughs> at this they point. Could, like you said though, Tommy. They could just add that thirty dollars on top and then use that thirty dollars to buy it themselves or whatever. Yeah, um, make it the same same difference then. Well, same same but different. Same but different. <gasps> but still same. <laughs> I forget that part with the hand gesture. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually key to I that. I just series. like and Seth Rogen's just. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well talking about uh some rugs it's never a fun time but it's also one of those times where it's like kind of like we knew this was going to happen we've always talked about this way back when I'm like oh 99 percent of the projects you know and love are going to fail and we were just like oh that's just like something everybody said and now we're starting to get into that season where it's actually happening projects that you know and love or maybe you didn't even think we're going to go down um r.i.p to my space otters you know terrible mismanagement from the actual founder probably, there or- yeah, I'm part of the lore, part of the rug now too. Dang. Um, Chill cons. I didn't chilled. see that going the way that it did, um, especially back when it was really hyped. It was one of those ones where we're like, "Fuck, we missed it on this one." Like, we don't have any, and they're doing great. Uh, I don't know why TJ didn't buy any, but um, it was like one that we missed out on. And Tommy, you got a couple, I think. From oh, that, bitch. Uh, sneak I, I Discord. Stole. Um, mm-hmm. But you sold them right away. Yeah, we missed that huge run, and then now, like, yeah, again, like, so we've seen projects that. You know, you see some that are um, newer or that, you know, never, we never had as much faith. We've seen one, some that were like, oh, this is like, this is a, like, when you look at the Cardano community of NFTs, this is one of the ones at the top. And some of these that you've seen, like, are at the top for the secondary sales and things like that. Like, they're always going to kind of be imprinted there, um, you know, for the next little bit at least. You know, I'm sure other people finally knock them down, but it, it's just kind of wild to see. Mm hmm. So well, I, I just I was thinking about how many rugs you have, Tommy. Like the ones we've been talking about, like in a lot of them, like a lot I, of I collect collections. rugs. You need to make it into a graveyard wall. I want to see them like collected together. Yes, the co- yes, Tommy's rug wall Tommy, or something. Tommy's, Tommy's Fluffy's, the rug collector. Base otters, Beat Boys. Um, Beat Boys ain't rugged yet, though, dude. Bro, they're gone. They're rugged. <laughs> Good vibes on, baby. <laughs> they're gonna come again in a month and post another update and, and oh, disregard oh, every single comment on our Twitter post. B boy is a scam or B boy. Yeah, well, they're B- going to Polygon. No, they're going to East. We're going to uh they they got Carolina. uh seven thousand phrases. Uh, oh shout out to the Dallas, dude. Shout out to the Dallas. Shout out to the Dallas. Um man, that was shout a weird out. one too. Or we JPEG got junkies. Back a little bit, Tommy. Um I didn't I touch that one at all. We missed the uh Jade now, but that was when we stayed away from the sure. variety of nerds and versions are. I didn't like that art either. Oh, you're talking JPEG junkies, dude. I yeah, saw uh, and virgins, wow. Yeah, that was Ape Crypto. Man, yeah, remember that one? That Forgot YouTube just that. disappeared. Forgot no, the that. Cardano scared him away. And the whole community came after him. Dude, yeah, that was bad. But though you got to think about that too, because I remember I know you know Zushan's obviously got some pretty strong opinions about them, and I didn't realize you know it's, I mean that whole the whole group over there. I mean Bitboy Crypto. You know, a lot of people are always you know very skeptical of that of what he talks about and. People are on one side of the fence or the other. It's like ex- one extreme to the other. Like either they're far hardcore followers or they're absolutely on the other side of that guy's a scammer. It's one of the two. There's no like in between, I feel like. And then, um, you know, so most people, when they like, you know, they saw like DZ and Justin and them coming over, you know, talking about Carn and they're like, yes, like, let's go. Um, you know, let's get some pipe back over here. And they were talking about like boss cats and things like that. But come to find out, you know, they're charging ridiculous amounts of money, like 10, you know, thousands of dollars for people to sponsor this. Hey, $10,000 they were charging for projects. You can say the number. It's insane. Uh, just it's crazy to me. I mean, and, and maybe that works. And worked on obviously the other chains, you know, especially when people had money, I get it. But it's just also very ingenuine too when it comes to that. Like, I guess that's a very a different kind of market when it comes down to like the shilling of things too. Yeah. Um, because YouTubers, you know, even we saw it even with all the shit, all the DeFi stuff recently of all the different people on Twitter pumping up all these different coins. Like, hey, you got to buy this, don't fade generational wealth, like all those kind of things. And it, it dials back to the same thing on, on the video side of stuff. But it's, you know, that DAO thing really, you know, it's stung yeah. people a lot of like, hey, you know what? The, the people want to do a token. Okay, I hear that people want to do a token. Well, they know that you can't do tokens because they're over here inside the U.S. So they're like... We're not doing that. We know this project's not going anywhere from here. It seems like you know nobody's really interested in it anymore. The the dropship merchant, you know, the merch really wasn't taken off the way they wanted it to. So they're like, you know what, guys, we know how to legally do this the right way. Project I think, here's, I think here. what happened was is that people caught on to their act, right? Because they were charging projects ridiculous amount of monies for them to promote and talk about. And then 
after a while, like months went by, more and more projects weren't getting pumped anymore from their promotions. So people were like kind of reading between the lines of they only promote stuff that people pay that getting paid for essentially. Well, not even that too. Like you could tell that they abandoned kind of that channel. Like they they passed it off, right? To the, yeah. uh, the other guy that's doing it now, Taco, whatever his name is. And you can just tell like there's a difference in quality. There's a difference in like, you know, just overall content. Uh, that's inside of there it's not being done the same way and anytime they do talk about it you know it's if it's like when it comes to the cardano side of things it's like car- top cardano project and it's something that like nobody really is really talking about and then that's how you kind of know like hey they must have gave them something to kind of talk about this because nobody's talking about this nobody cares about this not only that though too they use their existing platform to come over here because they had experience being in front of a camera selling a token or nfts to people or an audience and it worked for them it did initially because everyone ate it up i mean us included we're like damn they're they're pumping hard remember we used to call them the moon boys everything that they freaking talked about yeah you know that they everything was pumping and and i mean that's that's fine they build a brand to be able to do that you know great that's that's good on them but the problem is is like i said eventually the 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 act stops at some point it has to stop and the thing the biggest thing the biggest problem they ever did was making that pro- you know making these projects they have the pluto alliance one which i know didn't really do as well um on the ethereum side and they also have this one over here now the jpeg junkies which now is in possession of the community the dow and it's just like you just at the end of the day you feel bad for the people holding on to it because yes. even the people in that dow also got absolutely wrecked because of the zaitaki dragons thing so it's just like you feel bad um that people get screwed over and bought into a lot of the hype. So at the end of the day, it's always important for people to really dive into yep. who's behind these projects. Is it actually a legitimate thing that can actually be executed, even if the intentions are good on the front end? Um, and is there enough hype to really drive you through these tough times and have this market? Not only that, though, too, like as a project, do your research or research on influ- influencers you're giving your money to to promote you, especially that's a big number that, that they were giving away like towards the end there. Some projects probably didn't get enough hype or even uh, enough clout because of it um and they wasted a ton of money giving it to them well i know even Curious. us what's up i was gonna say even us though like we don't you I mean we get approached by projects sometimes too um and it's just like you know we, we don't really want to promote that even, even that's Twitter. great you want to pay money but like we, i'm not going to put our name behind some of this stuff because we get our yeah. own feelings about it you know yeah i was just going to say be i mean obviously anyone wants to have like a million followers or you know have those kind of regular viewers um but i was thinking like you mentioned that tga where they were calling the moon boys like it would almost be like a curse where it would be to the level like where if we actually did talk about a project we saw that kind of reflection on the secondary um or even on mint like oh like hey if we mention this project is going to mint out um because then it make i mean imagine us trying to navigate that with trying to figure out what we can talk about without causing it to sell out right. only because we talked about it you know what i mean like making sure like hey this project's okay it's not we're not saying like yeah. it needs to blow out the days they may not even be trying to do that they may be having like hey we're gonna have it open and definitely we're just like we have real things we're developing um so it'd just be an interesting situation and then especially when it's a situation where it's like all right sure you know if you could charge higher premiums for like if we had like advertisements or commercials or we're gonna sit here and read off an ad for uh you know, you know shaving your balls or whatever the fuck podcast get like ads for us a big one the manscapes whatever company um <laughs> and uh or blue chew all that stuff that all like you know bill burn all those podcasts have um <clears throat> but then like okay if it's a project and they do are paying these kind of levels of money like where it comes in is like is this a project i would have talked about if they didn't give them money? right and exactly that's it, and that's where it's just like you know that's kind of so far at least we've been fortunate enough i mean also, also we don't, <laughs> it's not like it's working like that but yeah we're like we, we want to make sure if we do have projects on that we're talking to we're interested for real like it's us that's because we yeah. want to know and actually talk to the people not like oh just for this reason yeah just because we're getting money for it or whatever because we don't we don't ever do that just talk about project because we because of that reason at all uh, i mean even the projects that we have ended up charging it's something that we most likely had an interest in before we ever had anything you know it's a lot of the times it's even been some of the closest friends that we've developed over the time we've gotten to the point where we're like hey man we we got streaming costs and stuff to do and then yep. at that point it's just like they're like dude absolutely like we appreciate you guys supporting us we have no problem supporting you 
and that's kind of like the literally paying for want. zoom paying for restream yeah. paying for all the other shit that we had to pay for stuff you pull out of your own wallet that you minted to be able to do giveaways instead exactly. of getting them donated you know i we pulled out countless stuff from our wallets before just to give out and just say thank you to everybody who watches us and tunes in you know we all have full-time careers and that that's what we do uh this is something we do more like you said on uh as like our passion for this space and uh, you never want to get those two like mixed. What's where I was also just saying is dangerous, you know, because they definitely, I think, approached it a lot more from like the, hey, we're like some crypto gurus here. Come to us. We got like the hot take or the hot alpha. We got like the real alpha, the advice. Like this is where you come to figure out what, like you don't know what you're doing. Come to us, buy what we buy and we'll make you rich kind of thing. Like it almost had that like get rich quick right. on crypto, like kind of vibe to the, those kind of YouTube channels where ours is like, no, we, we're just like members of the community sharing. Don't come to us. As we do. Yeah. And that's why it's not. Tommy's got a collection of rugs. Yeah, that's bro. We just, come yeah, he collects rugs, like rugs. Like for sure. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, we're all here trying to do what other, hopefully our viewers are doing, which is the same thing. And same reasons they originally, like we originally got in, they got in, which was like, Hey, we're here because we can get in at a lower point and we've seen huge flips happen and we're, we like to roll the dice sometimes and go for those one on ones, and we like that rush of being like, "This thing's worth fucking five grand." I, yep. this is, I spend sixty bucks on it. This is awesome. And we're just like, you know, getting to share that. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about that. And then also now we've gotten to meet a lot more of the community, so it's become that extra layer on top of that money yeah. side. Made friends. To, it's been a good, good experience for the you most part. Met up with a ton of people, Tommy. Yeah, and then yeah, I'll meet yeah, up with a few more of you guys good, here good in about a, body count. About two Tommy's months got, now. We're close, close. Less than that. TXLV. Less than that. It's end of next month. Yeah. Yeah. Right after when I turned 35, I got, I saw Demosthenes comments today too. He's like, got to get on the show again before you guys become a freedom 36 er over here. <laughs> so wow. like, shout out to them over there. But yeah, the, the rugs. Yeah. yeah. Actually we were talking about, it. we said like, you're coming up with like the 35, but you actually have a full year. That's what I was thinking. Too. I, did, I did the math. I'm like, you can't be 36 ers yet. So I'm still got a whole year for 30. So I got a whole year of the 35. So see what happens here um, oh yeah. maybe we'll come out with a project mm. cnt carpets what do you think okay. that's definitely been done all those kind Is of stupid meme right. versions they tell me people have memed the rugs now it's out of control yeah, yeah. i'm surprised they're not to soul hasn't made a palantir with it just carpet just type how about png there. addicts Ooh, that's a good one we'll have uh phrases and then um, twelve thousand phrases, <laughs> twelve six thousand. Why not twelve thousand? Eighteen thousand <laughs> phrases. Oh, uh, let's start off with. <laughs> <laughs>